Hello. Let's say you have a web application which is talking to some external database or external API to grab some information. Okay. Um, for whatever reason, let's say the if the connectivity to this external database or external service is slow, the impact will be visible on your application. Also, you wouldn't be able to give a great user experience to, to your, your clients. As more and more people or, or users start to use your application, this problem is just going to grow from here. Because your backend is already struggling, it won't be able to recover uh, if you make more more requests. There are several ways to fix this problem. One way is to cache the information in your your node or your application, so you don't have to hit your you know external service or database all the time. So what you can do is you can simply cache some sort of information over here, and you can serve the response right from here. Okay, there are various ways of fixing this problem. One way is to you can you can have you know some sort of Java collection based structure where you can store this information. But there are pros and cons of this approach because you have to write a lot of boilerplate code. Plus you have to write policies, how you evict, how you update, all these things. What we are going to use is we are going to use a very nice library or API given by Spring called Spring Cache. Okay, so we'll be using Spring Cache to to fulfill uh, this particular use case. Um, we will also be looking at a market leading um, in memory and, and distributed cache uh, library called Hazelcast. Okay, and uh, in, in our workshop, what we'll be doing, we'll be basically try to use the embedded uh, mode of, of Hazelcast, which will help us um, uh, to keep everything in memory. Also, if you have multiple nodes running in your environment, they will be able to synchronize very nicely. Okay, something like this. So using the Hazel, uh, Hazelcast embedded mode uh, plus the, the, the distributed um, uh, logic, we'll be able to synchronize this local cache very nicely, which is running in multiple nodes. Um, so let's just directly go to our code and see what changes we need to make in order to enable Spring Cache and bring Hazelcast into our application. So just to demonstrate what, what the problem we are facing here, let's say we have this products application. Every time I make a call, um, it's basically going to some external database. And as you can see, the response is very slow. Doesn't matter how many times I call, every time I'm making a call to my backend service, and this, this is always slow. So we have to fix this particular problem by adding a Spring Cache. So this is our Spring Boot application. As you can see, let's stop the server, which is running at the moment. So first thing you want to do is open your pom.xml of your application. Let's just close that. This is my pom.xml over here. First thing you want to do is you want to add this particular annotation or uh, this dependency called uh, Spring Framework Boot, Spring uh, Boot Starter Cache. Okay, and I'm using version 2.6.2. Another thing you want to do is you would like to add Hazelcast. Okay, just use uh, com.hazelcast and say Hazelcast dash all. This is the version I'm using. Once you've done that, just resolve your dependencies and then head back to your Spring Boot application, which is over here, and just put this annotation called enable caching. At this point, you have told uh, Spring that this application um, is, is cache enabled. Okay, that's it. Now, now we need to identify the methods which are candidate for, for caching. Okay, so let's go to product DAO. This is, you know, our data access object, which is um, just talking to some external database and, and uh, getting the information. So what we need to do is we need to put annotation called cacheable and you have to give a name to this cache. I'm going, I'm going to call it products and I'm saying, please cache based on the product ID. Okay. So next time when I make call to this method again, system or the spring cache will be able to see, I am already holding information for this, this product ID. So it will not call this particular method and it will be able to return from the cache itself. Okay. It's as simple as that. So I have now enabled this particular uh, annotation on this get product method. Let's start our Spring Boot application. Okay, so, so application has been started. Let's go back to Postman. Uh, I hope you can see. Yep. So if I call my service again, 
for the first time it's going to be slow because there is nothing in cache however see the magic if i call now for the second time third time fourth time is is lightning fast reason being because spring cache has now cached that information and it's serving from from internal or local cache it doesn't need to go to uh, external database uh, in order to grab that information okay how do i make the make the changes so what we need to do is let's go back to our uh, uh, product DAO. let's say i have a service which is also updating this database so what you need to do is on the update product you have to use annotation called cache put and again you will be using the same cache name and same key so every time i'm making changes to um, my my you know external database at the same time i can also cache this information so i don't need to you know kind of pull pull this information again from the backend database the assumption here is that my application is responsible to to kind of you know uh, make the changes to to that data as well if uh, your another node is making the changes you know you can apply uh, other policies you can evict the cache at some regular intervals you can refresh it at, at regular intervals but over here my assumption is that my application is making the changes as well as responsible to to grab that information okay so let's re so let's restart our application one more time head back to uh, postman okay what we can do is we can now call update product service and the changes which i'm going to make let's say um let's just put you know something some asterisks um around android smart tv okay and just to be sure let's just put one over here and if i take you back to my get product you see right now it's called sony led 4k smart tv for product id p101 what we want to do is for p101 let's copy this information okay and paste it over here what we want to do is let's say now i like to add something called it's actually android uh, smart tv and let's also put some asterisks around it okay so maybe it's, let's say it's a markup language so so we can see android smart tv in bold let's update our data source now if i come back to my uh, service and if i say please give me the latest data as you can see there is one there is no delay second we are getting up to date information perfect this is exactly what we wanted to prove through spring cache now one more thing as i said earlier uh, in the in the presentation what if we have multiple nodes okay would they be able to synchronize this information yes what you need to do uh, for that you need to add another file called hazelcast.yaml so that's a hazelcast configuration so head back to your resources add this file called hazelcast.yaml okay and you just need this property called hazelcast network join multicast enabled equal to true so what hazelcast will do uh, at this point it will automatically discover um, all the you know um, nodes running running hazelcast in my local environment if you are running this look um, uh, remotely then you'll have to add a list of ip addresses or host names so it can automatically coordinate with with those ho uh, hosts since i'm running everything locally uh, in in my uh, local mac so i just need to put this information so let's stop our server okay and let's go back to terminal so i have opened two terminals over here i'm just going to start my application uh, sorry let's come quickly compile the application okay and let's start our application one running on port 8080 i'm going to start another um, a node and i'm going to use port 8081 at this point okay let's just start what you will notice um once application has started successfully it will join the cluster of of hazelcast nodes right so as you can see over here it's saying i've got two members right size two and uh, 
and these are two members right so one is running on port 5701 which is internal hazelcast uh, port and this is 5702 okay which is saying this arm this and this is my remote machine so now they are kind of you know connected to each other they will be able to synchronize the information uh, with each other and let's prove that okay so if i take you back to postman first thing you want to do is let's run port 8080 if i just say um product 101 first time it's going to be slow okay now the information has been loaded in cache also remotely it would have been synchronized on on second node okay what i mean is if i take this url now and if i open with port number 8081 which is the port of second node do you think there will be delay because you know this is the first time it needs to hit the external database answer is no why because internally nodes should have synchronized this information so it doesn't matter which node got the the information internally it will automatically send to another node okay something like this Yeah, so, so let's say this node has loaded the information. Now it will automatically push this information to app two and this information should be available here. I don't need to make this, this external call. All right, so to prove the point, this is port 8081. I'm expecting it to run real quick, no delay of two or three seconds. Okay, as you can see, it's already finished loading. Now, what if I make changes on maybe node 2 okay so if i just say port number 8081 i'm going to make the same change over here for product 101 so i'm so just go back to slide so i'm making change here this time and i'm expecting the change to be reflected immediately on f1 yeah so we are on port 8081 i'm going to make this change asterisk android smart tv okay as we can see right now, it's simply saying Sony LED 4K TV. I'm going to make this change. Let's hit send button. Okay, so database has been updated and 201. Um, check on another node, 8080. Boom. How beautiful is that? Automatically, nodes have synchronized the, the cache. Okay, I don't have to call external service over here all the magic has already been done okay and same on 8081 earlier we were getting 4k smart tv if i refresh there we are we got updated cache and up-to-date information so this is how you enable spring cache in your application and um, you can use various other libraries libraries okay but we have used hazelcast today and we also demonstrated how you can you know uh, run uh, in in multi-node uh, i hope you like the video please uh, subscribe uh, to my channel if you have not um, leave a comment uh, at at bottom if you have uh, any question thanks for your time